It's no secret that Chromebooks are popular for their simplicity and affordability, but what are their hidden limitations? If you're looking to buy one, this video will give you the straight facts on five things that Chromebooks just can't do. Let's start with the most basic, and that is software installation. Now, if you're new to the Chrome world, a Chromebook is an amazing device, but it doesn't run Windows and it doesn't run Mac OS. It runs Chrome OS, which is a completely different operating system that you may be used to using. It means that you can't install Adobe Photoshop, you can't install Microsoft Outlook, you just basically get a Chrome browser. And although you can install some web apps that will run and you can use remote desktop to connect to another machine that may be running other apps, locally on the machine, you're stuck to Chrome, which means you're pretty much stuck with using online applications, cloud or browser-based applications. Instead of using Adobe Photoshop, you might need to use Canva. Instead of using MYOB accounting software on the desktop, if it still exists on the desktop, you might have to use zero.com online in the browser. Certain software that needs to be installed on an operating system like Mac or Windows is just not available on Chrome. Now, the impact here is that you're going to miss out on some of those apps potentially, but either you may be able to find workarounds or you might be able to use in some instances a different computer if you absolutely have to, or in the third case, which many businesses do, if you have a fleet of machines and every now and again, someone needs to do just one thing on a Windows machine, people will often set up a remote desktop application server and you can dial in from a Chromebox or Chromebook anywhere and access that app from on the go. As much as possible, as we transition into a fully cloud operating system and a fully cloud way of doing business where all of our apps are living in the browser, you, for the most part, should be able to get away with using a Chrome device. Or if you can't find the app to work online, sometimes you'll be able to find an app in the Google Play Store, which the Chrome device does support. And that means if you can install an application on the Google Play Store as an Android app, well, you might be able to get done what you need to get done. It's not an amazing experience, but it can help in times when you're stuck. If you're super nerdy, you can also install a Linux environment, which gives you pretty much full control to install whatever apps you like, but it does require some command line experience and you know, getting your hands a little bit dirtier in the back end of a machine, which for most business owners is not really the kind of thing they wanna do. Next up, let's talk about offline. And this is one of the key criticisms of Chrome machines. Now, yes, you can get plenty done on a Chrome machine. You get the Chrome browser, you can access things online. You can also work with files. If you plug in a USB stick, you'll be able to open PDFs and media files, and you'll be able to do everything you would normally do. Listen to music via Bluetooth if you want, connect to Wi-Fi, connect to Ethernet. All of those options are available on a Chromebook. However, considering that most of your work is probably gonna be done in the browser these days, you are heavily reliant on an internet connection for most tasks when it comes with a Chromebook. Now, that means that without an internet connection, you're gonna be fairly limited in what you can get done. It means that if you happen to be offline, maybe on a flight or in an area or a cafe where you just can't connect to the internet, well, you're gonna potentially be stuck, unable to edit that social media post in Canva or unable to reconcile those accounts in Zero. Now, there are some options that are available to you. If you're using Gmail for your email, which I assume you would be if you're considering Chrome, you can switch on offline mode, which gives you access to the last 90 days of email offline. You can read, respond, you can reply, you can compose new emails, and that gives you the option to stay connected. And as soon as you connect back to the internet, all your emails are sent and you're resynchronized again. Google Drive also has the ability to work offline across most of its document applications. So if you wanna work with a Google Doc or a spreadsheet or a presentation, you can work with those offline and any changes you make will just be synchronized once you connect again. You can even work with Microsoft documents stored in your Google Drive. So if you have a Word document or an Excel document, you may not have every single feature that you're used to, but you can at least do basic editing offline even when you don't have access to the internet. Personally, I found that this isn't too much of a hindrance. I'm seldom disconnected from the internet these days, considering Starlink is just about everywhere in the world now, and most planes are now starting to get pretty reasonable internet online as well. There's not many places where I'm not connected. When I'm sitting in a cafe, I've got my phone there that I can tether to, which makes things easy as well. And you know, I understand that in some cases, it's just not gonna work for you to not be able to do your work online all the time. That's understandable. but Let's move on to number three. Let's talk about hardware. Now, 
Chromebooks may struggle to connect to certain printers, scanners, or other external peripherals. For the most part, most of these applications and most of these devices are moving to open protocols and open drivers, meaning that if you've got a network printer, you can probably connect to it okay. But if you're doing scanning or maybe another external peripheral like a specialized label printer and it requires a particular kind of software to be installed to operate that machine, well, that's where you may run into issues because most of those softwares are designed for either Apple OS or they're designed for Windows and you're not going to be able to install them on a Chrome device. Maybe a high-end printer like a plotter that requires design CAD programs to operate it just probably isn't going to work. So you want to check your compatibility very carefully. Personally, I do a lot of audio visual work and because I'm live streaming and I have a very graphic intensive program to run my live streams in 4K quality, well, for me, I need to use an Apple computer to do that because not all of my peripherals work with Chrome and, you know, even the application that allows me to set up different scenes on my computer and switch between them as I'm live just doesn't work on a Chrome device. I love using Chrome and it's my preferred operating system, but when I'm producing on the road, I unfortunately have to take a MacBook because it's the only machine that will let me do the creative work that I need to do. The bottom line here is that some specialized use cases are just not going to be workable with Chrome. It doesn't mean that your team might not be able to use Chrome. It doesn't mean it might not be a great machine for someone who's working primarily online and in the cloud, but it does mean that there are some challenges. Now, there are some workarounds. You can use cloud-based printing solutions if it's a printer that doesn't work. Maybe you've got another computer in the office that runs Windows or Mac and they can share the printer to your Chrome device. That's a little bit of a workaround, but for some people that will work. Check the compatibility before purchase Purchasing. or you can potentially add peripherals like maybe a USB dongle that will help get things working for you. Number four is gaming and Chrome are not really that great when it comes to gaming, especially if anything is high end graphic intensive. Chrome devices are known to have pretty basic graphics hardware because they're not really designed for games. You can stream to them if you wish, but honestly, most of the gaming world in terms of like games that you install on your computer and play are unavailable to Chrome. If you're working on the web and you're playing a purely browser-based online game, as long as you've got enough RAM in your Chromebook, it's probably gonna run okay. Of course, you need a decent internet connection, but that's no different to a Windows or a Mac machine. If you're streaming, Google did previously have their application called Stadia, which was unfortunately shut down and now no longer available. But Nvidia does have GeForce Now, which is available. And there are also Android apps on the Play Store that can be installed on Chrome devices as well. But don't let that fool you. Chrome devices are not known to have a great experience with gaming. I would say at best, it's gonna entertain the most casual gamer. Or if you're well set up for streaming and you're happy to deal with the additional overhead of dealing with and managing that, including getting your network perfect so the latency is low enough to get game streaming working, well, your Chrome device might be okay. But personally, I would choose to game on a different device that's more dedicated for it and not try and have a fish climb a tree. Number five is limited customization. And Chromebooks really offer fewer options for customizing hardware and for upgrading the machines yourself. Most Chrome devices are in the laptop format, that's Chromebooks. You can buy Chrome boxes, and Chrome boxes typically do allow you to update either the hard drive size, if it's got internal memory or a dedicated hard drive, and they do tend to allow you to upgrade the RAM, so you can add more memory to it as well. But in most of the laptops, many of them these days are now just hard wired and hard soldered in to the actual circuitry. It means that you are not user serviceable in RAM. You can't update to additional RAM on the machine, which kind of sucks. It means if you want to do something resource intensive, like, you know, video editing, 3D rendering, that's just not available at all because you can't upgrade the graphics card and the RAM, in some cases, is not upgradable at all. If you are a power user, if you're an executive or you're someone who does a lot of multitasking and you've got a lot of tabs open at the same time, RAM can run out pretty quickly on a Chrome device, even though they are much more efficient than using a Windows or a Mac device. And so my recommendation would be if you can to specify more RAM on the machines that you purchase if you're purchasing a Chrome machine. Otherwise, you're going to have a bad time. Now, consider cloud-based solutions for as many of the applications that you're working with as possible because web tools are going to use less resources on your local machine or opt for a different device potentially if you absolutely must do a task and it's a RAM hog and it's just not going to work on your local machine.
You can, of course, upgrade any of the RAM, and my recommendation, if you're going for a machine that's going to sit on your desk for the next three to five years, go ahead and crack open the box and put some more RAM in. Find a model that is allowing you to upgrade the RAM yourself, and you will be sweet. If you're finding that any of these issues are a showstopper for your business, or you would like some support implementing any of these into your business, well, we have a technical concierge service that gives you unlimited access to our expert technical team that can help you navigate through this and assist you with any other technical problems that you face in the Google ecosystem. If you'd like to book a free consultation, we can help you uncover the best technology solutions for your business as you grow and scale, whether you're a sole operator, a small business, or a large organization with hundreds or even thousands of employees. Click the link down below to get started.